writing techniques and strategies. You have already seen presentations on a number of development patterns and have practiced them in your writing classes. Today we are going to examine two new strategies, classification and definition. Let's begin the discussion with classification. Classification is a method of arranging information into groups according to certain characteristics or functions. Much technical and scientific writing relies heavily on the technique of classification in order to clearly and effectively analyze a given subject. However, classification is not restricted to technical or scientific writing. If it serves the purpose of the writing assignment, classification can be an effective tool to orient the readers and provide them with more accurate understanding of the subject being discussed. It gives the reader a precise field of reference. Let's see how we can classify restaurants, for example. Restaurants is a broad subject. There are perhaps four main types or classes of restaurants. Fast food, cafeteria, family, and fine dining. You could further classify or divide those groups into sub-classifications. Fast food restaurants could be divided into snack bars, takeout, delivery, and so on. So far we have used styles of service as, a, as the criteria for our classification. Another basis for classification might be cost, from least to most expensive. In the following paragraph, you will see how the writer classifies consumers of stereo equipment. He groups them according to their reasons for buying a stereo system. As stereo equipment gets better and prices go down, stereo equipment are becoming household necessities rather than luxuries. People are buying stereos by the thousands. During my year as a stereo sales clerk, I witnessed this boom firsthand. I dealt with hundreds of customers, and it didn't take long for me to learn that people buy stereos for different reasons. Eventually, though, I was able to divide all the stereo buyers into four basic categories. The wattage buyer, the quality buyer, the price buyer, and the looks buyer. Notice the author has given us four main categories. When the classification is short and simple, you can incorporate it into the sentence structure as was done in the passage above. However, if the classification is more detailed or provides subclassifications, it is sometimes helpful to enumerate or list the different groups in order to make sure the reader has a clear picture. Here are three different methods of expressing the same system of classification of the term music. First is the paragraph format. There are many styles of music. We could divide music into four categories, rock, popular, country, and classical. Each one of these styles could then be subdivided. Rock music includes heavy metal, hard rock, soft rock, and alternative. The popular music category contains easy listening, jazz, blues, and some soft rock. Country music includes country and western, bluegrass, rockabilly, and folk. Classical music embraces opera, new age classical, and traditional classical. Because there is a lot of information in that paragraph, and more could be added, it is not perhaps as easy to follow as one of the following formats. Let's look at another approach. There are many styles of music. We could divide music into four main groups. Rock, popular, country, and classical. This style makes the different subgroups easier to see. Let's try enumerating them. This is another option for presenting the groups clearly. There are different styles of music. We could divide music into four main groups. Rock, popular, country, and classical. 
you can use classification to help you organize your information in order to emphasize certain qualities more than others and to make it easier for the reader to understand clearly what you are trying to say. The criteria you set as the basis for classifying different aspects or of the topic will depend on the purpose of your writing and your audience. These two factors must always play a major role in your planning and organization strategies for your writing assignments. You will see more examples and have the opportunity to practice this development strategy in your workbook exercises and in your writing workshops. Now let's take a look at how, how and why you can use definition as an effective method of developing a topic. To define something means to explain it. Sometimes we define terms because they are unknown to others. However, we often define a term because it may have a different meaning in a different context. How and why you choose to define a term depends once again on your purpose and your audience. In a broad sense, the reason for defining a word is to ensure that its meaning is understood by all. The extent to which you need to define a word depends on the possible range of meanings or connotations that word may have. Those connotations are based on our individual interpretations of that word in different contexts. For example, the word cheap has a number of connotations. In a positive context, it means that something is not expensive, which is a good characteristic for most of us. However, cheap also has a negative side. An article of clothing may be cheap in terms of its quality, in other words, poorly made. Used as a description of a person, cheap presents a very negative portrayal of the person's character. There are different methods of defining a term. First, a synonym or a brief dictionary definition may be all that is required to provide the necessary clarification for the readers. When presenting a definition, be sure that your word choice and usage is accurate, both in meaning and in grammatical structure. Make sure that the structure of the sentence is parallel or balanced. Also, be careful not to use colloquial or slang expressions. Avoid using the words when or where in your definition. The following example is grammatically incorrect. Classification is when you arrange something into classes or groups. Instead, we should word the definition in the following manner. Classification is the arrangement of some information into classes or groups. When a noun is being defined, a noun should begin the definition. In this case, classification is a noun and so is arrangement. When you arrange something into classes or groups is a clause and the word when indicates that it is an adverb clause. Here's another example. To classify is arranging information into groups. This is not a parallel structure. To classify is to arrange information into groups. This statement, this definition, is presented in a parallel structure. Again, a simple definition or a synonym may be all that is required. However, if you need a little more explanation, you can use a class definition. Tell your readers what kind of thing it is and explain how it differs from others in the same group. For example, a Ferrari is a car. Unless your reader knows a lot about cars, and that knowledge is something you can't always count on, you haven't really told your reader much about this kind of car. However, if you said that the Ferrari was an expensive, high-speed sports car, your reader has a much better picture of what you are talking about. 
Sometimes, a class definition, such as the one just mentioned, will not give the reader enough explanation in terms of the purpose of your topic. If your topic involved advice on what kind of sports car to buy, you would need to extend your definition. To expand your definition and to explain it further, you can use examples and comparisons. However, don't go overboard. Don't go into so much detail that your reader becomes bored or insulted. Knowing your audience is again an important factor. There is one more kind of definition which may help you develop your writing skills. It is called a stipulative definition. To stipulate means to specify. So a stipulative definition provides a specific meaning for a particular word from a number of possible meanings or connotations. Writers use this kind of definition to clarify abstract concepts. In the following example, the author uses a stipulative definition to clarify the word intelligence, a word that could have a wide range of interpretations. Intelligence is sometimes defined as what intelligence tests measure. If we want to consider the question of intelligence in chimpanzees, we obviously cannot simply administer the Stanford Binet or other commonly used IQ tests. But we should be able to determine whether experiments with chimpanzees demonstrate elements of intelligence considered important by psychologists. The capacity for abstract thinking or reasoning, problem solving, acquiring knowledge, and adapting to one's environment. Memory, mental speed, and linguistic competence. The author provided a specific field of reference for the reader by using this style of definition. A stipulative definition can make an excellent introduction to a piece of writing. It sets the scene, limits the topic and terminology, and orients the reader. Today we have seen that clarity is one of the keys to effective writing. Whether you need to classify or group ideas or define terminology, you must ensure that your ideas are expressed clearly, accurately, and effectively. You need to have a specific purpose and topic and an understanding of who your reader is. You must also maintain clarity in your development, style, and word choice and usage. This ends today's presentation. Through your workbook exercises and in your writing workshops, you have the opportunity to practice these techniques and further develop your writing skills. Thank you for your time and happy writing. <laughs>